Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse here and I am back to give you guys just kind of a glimpse at iOS 13. Um, not really going to look at iPad OS 13 um, today, but as you know, uh, the iPad has kind of split off from iOS. It's largely similar, but iPad OS sort of has its own um, additional functionality for the larger screen, mainly dealing with like app switching and uh, running multiple apps at the same time. Um, <clears throat> to be honest with you, not things that I use really all that much. I've actually been using the beta of iPadOS since mm, I think it was July at some point. And I've been mainly testing out like the core features of iOS 13, uh, maybe a couple little bits and pieces of iPadOS specifically, but honestly just more of um, getting to learn some of the new things that are in iOS 13. So a lot of mainstream sites these days are, you know, they're saying that uh, iOS 13, there's not really a lot there. Uh, at least surface level, there's not. Um, and to be fair, maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't a whole lot in some ways, depending on how you look at it. I mean, visually, most things look the same aside from one major, major change, which I am very, very happy for, uh, which they should have done years ago, but we'll get to that momentarily. Um, but what these mainstream sites don't take into account is accessibility. You know, they like, oh, okay, we got notes and mail and Safari and, you know, whatever. You're typical, you know, I mean, they spend all the time talking about photos and the camera and camera and photos and all that crap. So... You know, if that stuff hasn't changed all that much, they just kind of gloss over. And then you see, of course, these articles. Here are some hidden features of iOS that you may not know. And all they are is they go into accessibility and go, hey, you can change the screen color or you can make text bigger. I mean, it's like if you paid attention to accessibility at all, uh, these are just things that you could have been doing for ages. And they're just there for everybody. So <clears throat> also a quick disclaimer. I was going to do this when iOS 13 came out, but we are actually past iOS 13.1, <laughs> which uh, apparently when iOS 13 came out on, I forget even when it was, like the 19th-ish, somewhere in there, um, <laughs> they already announced, like it was supposed to be at the end of the month that 13.1 was going to come out, which was actually a pretty quick turnaround. But then they decided, no, we're going to move that up to the 24th because there are a few major bugs, apparently, that some people are encountering. And so they kind of seem to really rush iOS 13. So we're actually running iOS 13.1, which I would definitely recommend, um, you know, now that it is out. Now you can uh, more easily upgrade. Um, some of the other bugs should be addressed. So this is not going to be a comprehensive feature of everything in iOS 13 and 13.1. I think if you want that, um, both from an accessibility voiceover standpoint and then just a general accessibility, if you want a really comprehensive, every single thing, audio demonstration, um, go to AppleViz and they have appleviz.com and they have, and if you, um, if you just look up the AppleViz podcast in your podcast um, your podcast app of choice, it should be there. And um, <clears throat> basically, they have several really good podcasts demonstrating eh, just different features of iOS 13. Um, you know, a few, they kind of dive in deep on a couple of different aspects of it. Um, they talk about some of the new features for accessibility and voiceover users. They, they do one on just some of the general overall features. And these are actually really good podcasts. I even learned a thing or two myself that I didn't realize. So this is really just going to be kind of my overall impressions of iOS 13. Some of the things that I find particularly useful and that I might want to draw your guys' attention to. So I'm on my iPhone 10s Max. And yeah, they did announce some new iPhones this year. I'm not going to be upgrading um, you got the 11, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max. Um, I didn't really do a whole Apple Keynote event this year because it just wasn't super interesting. I wasn't going to upgrade anything, and so 
we're running the iPhone XS Max. We are at the home screen. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings because this is where we really want to check out some Dock. stuff. Settings. Double tap to open. Use what do settings. we have here? Looks a little bit different, doesn't it? We have dark mode. Yeah, finally. Android Q and iOS 13 both decided that, yeah, you know what, this year, yeah, let's give them dark mode, especially with all these OLED screens and stuff. Um, I've been waiting for this for a while. You know, they've been teasing out, teasing us on the Mac last year. They had the watch app that looks really good. And it kind of, this, this dark scheme, the black background, dark gray background here, kind of reminds me a lot of what you get in the Apple Watch app, and it looks really good. Like, the contrast is good. Um, you have some, like I said, you've got the black area, you've got the gray area, so it's all nice there. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to know is <clears throat> they have moved accessibility. Remember, you always used to go to settings, and then general, then accessibility. Turns out, if I... General button. So there's general. Now I'm going to swipe to the right a couple times. Control center, button, display and brightness, button, accessibility, button. Accessibility. So it's on the top level, which means Apple is kind of um, pulling that out of general, not making it quite so buried. And uh, like I said, with good reason, because they have done a lot in iOS 13 regarding accessibility. So we're going to go in there. We're just going to Accessibility features help you customize your iPhone for your individual because needs. Because there are some things in here that I definitely want to draw your attention to. So... Voiceover, they've done a lot here. Let's pop into voiceover on voiceover button. here. Voiceover on now, double tap to toggle setting. Um, speech button there. That stuff is pretty much similar. Verbosity button, verbosity. I think that was there before. Braille button, braille. There's where you pair your braille display. Remember, if you're pairing a braille display, you have to pair it there and not under Bluetooth, otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Believe me, I've forgotten and made that mistake a time or three. Audio button, audio. Commands button. Let me go into audio, audio really button. quick because I can't remember if they've added sounds and stuff haptics in here. Button. So, oh right, sounds so, and haptics button. Sounds and haptics. Audio ducking on. Auto select speaker and call on. Send to HDMI off. Audio ducking sounds and haptics sounds button. And haptics, sounds I heavy. Think... Haptics on. Sounds off. Sounds Double off. Tap to to ha haptics on. Haptics Double tap is to toggle on setting. by default. Now, one of the new features of iOS 13 is they've added a lot more haptic feedback. So. As you're flicking, as you're double tapping, as things kind of open and close, you get little bzz, little vibrations in your device. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm sort of indifferent. I'm kind of in the middle right now, but you can turn it on and off here. Haptic intensity, 100% adjustable. And I could swipe up or down with 90%, 80%. So let's say at 80% here. Interaction, heading, item focused, button. And you can literally turn on different haptics for, like if I go into item focus. Sound, dim, sound, dimmed, off, haptic, on. So because Double I have to toggle setting. sound off, um, I can turn certain haptics. So let's say I want pretty much most of the haptics off, but there's one specific thing I would like to have for preview uh, button. vibration. So you can do that. Um, item and focus there's button. tons of these. Scroll I'm not going to flick through all of them but just to make you guys aware i mean there's a lot of customized controls like do you want your phone to vibrate do you want do you want sound effects for these different things i mean we, we've always had the little clicks and sounds like that from ios but now we have haptics as sounds well. and so haptics I to button bring that voice to over speech items now. on the screen also large cursor ah, off no don't do double that. tap rose one to nine of 17 braille button audio commands button now commands let's go in here all this commands, is button. new all commands. Now button. this is cool because they're sort of. I think there was the, they had these things on the Mac for a while, but they're coming to iOS now. So I'm. I have all commands. Touch gestures button. Touch gestures. Keyboard shortcuts keyboard button. Keyboard shortcuts. So if I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard or Braille display. Handwriting button. Handwriting. Braille screen input button. And Braille screen input. So not only can I use the voiceover gestures that are already included. <clears throat> if there are gestures that are not already taken by a command, or let's say I don't like the way one, maybe like uh, some people say, oh, I don't like the way the rotor, I want to switch the rotor to be a different gesture because they don't like the turning motion, they find it hard. So you could theoretically um, <clears throat> change that rotor 
to be something else that's not taken, like a different one, two, or three, like kind of multi-finger flick. So let's say I want gestures. Touch gestures, button, tap, one finger, and heading. And you have all of them are broken down. You have one finger. Tap, one finger, heading, one finger, single tap, speak item, dimmed. And it'll tell you what the gesture is. It'll tell you what it does. One finger, double tap, activate, dimmed. One finger, triple tap, secondary active, one finger, quadruple tap. So one finger quadruple tap, I don't have that set to anything, and I don't know what I would want to set it to, but if I double tapped on that, it would give me Cancel tons button. of these options. Interaction, heading. Now, since these are also divided into headings, I'm going to show you one thing that I did do earlier, the other day. I did add a gesture, because I use this a lot, instead of having to go to my rotor all the time on the web, and in app areas like this, I chose to say, take a, take a two finger swipe left and swipe right. You had to do both separate commands. But if I take two fingers and swipe right. Basic navigation, heading. Text navigation, heading. Then I'll flick left with two fingers. Basic navigation, heading. Interaction, I heading. I didn't change my rotor at all. I was on. Characters, audio destination, characters. So let's say I was on characters and I'm gonna flick right with two fingers. Basic navigation, heading. So because I use headings so much, and that's how I might want to quickly get around these settings screens or on a web page, that's actually really freaking handy. Now the one downside that I've seen so far, and I hope they add this in a future iOS 13 update, <clears throat> I was hoping that these settings would propagate between your devices. So I set this up on my iPhone, but when I turn, when I go to my iPad, those gestures that I added, I was hoping that would just be tied to your Apple ID. And then you could, you know, if I did that on my phone, it would just boom. Then I can do that on all my iOS devices signed into that Apple ID. I hope that's added later. So, like I said, I don't know what I'm going to make this, but I have all these different, like, interaction, interaction. Heading. activate, magic tap, escape, perform long press, move to pre move, move so, to move to know, there's above. text editing, there's navigation, there's all kinds of different, well, let's just go through the headings really fast. Basic navigation, he text navigation, heading. Come on, uh-oh. Oh, why are you not speaking? Move to next link. Editing, huh, heading. Okay. Rotor, heading. Scrolling, heading. Speech and audio, head output, heading. So I'm just going to scrub back. But these selected. are... One finger, these selected, are all, one finger, selected, one finger. Now, this is just nav... This, these are just gestures. I could go in, let's go back. All commands, button, keyboard shortcuts, keyboard button, shortcuts. keyboard shortcuts, heading. If I really wanted to create like a certain keyboard shortcut for something, um, I haven't even dove into this. I mean, like I said, it's so deep. Um, and this is a good way for keyboard reference. Like, oh, is there a command in iOS if I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard to do this? And you can say, oh, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I could just read through this list and, you know, I use a Bluetooth keyboard to type a lot, but I don't necessarily use a lot of commands at this point. But if I went through this list and learned a few of these and then customize a few of mine that are unassigned, I could get some ideas and become use my keyboard a lot better with iOS. So if you are a voiceover user, you definitely want to spend some time in here because... <laughs> I could spend a, I mean, I could just do a, a video just all going through all this stuff, but I mean, I want to encourage you guys, I just want to show you where this is, that it exists. Go check this out in here because you can do a lot of stuff in here. Keyboard shortcuts, button, handwriting, So button. handwriting, you can, I haven't even really dove into that because I don't use the handwriting or braille, in, braille uh, screen, screen input, input button. all that much. Voice over, Other on. than I've just tried Double it. tap to toggle so settings. Those are controls. Braille, button, audio, button, commands, or button, commands. activities, button. Command, activities, button. Now, activities, this is another thing that button. I haven't even really gotten to play with much. I did on my iPad a little bit, but... Activities allow you to change a group of voiceover settings quickly with a rotor or automatically when opening an app or encountering a specific item in the user interface. Right. So let's say that maybe, you know, if you are reading a lot of complex um, documents in one app or... You know, you're just, you want voiceover to behave a certain way, maybe use a different voice or speed up or slow down or maybe treat punctuation differently or all kinds of customizations. 
<clears throat> you know, you can do that on a per app basis. So if I add activity, add activity button, name, activity one, text so field. I could name Double the activity. To edit, name, I'm just going to swipe one, through text, here really settings, fast. Heading, voice, default, so button. I can change the voice. Speaking rate, 50 percent, adjust the volume, 80 percent, verbosity settings, punctuation, default button. So I can change the the punctuation for that particular activity. Speak emojis off. Double tap to toggle oh, setting. Oh, by the way, there is a general setting in uh, VoiceOver. If you use the default Twitter app, or if you hate emojis as much as I do, like especially when people put them in their usernames, please don't do that. By the way, if you are doing that, please stop. But I've turned globally, I've turned turn emojis off because they're a pain in the butt and I don't like them, um, especially when they're in usernames because they're really distracting. Table headers off. So I double can tap to toggle setting. headers. Row and column numbers off. Braille settings heading. General status L off. Text status L off. Braille table default. But Braille output default. So let's button. say in one app maybe you wanted UEB, but maybe you're reading a lot of old documents that uses the traditional code. You could say, I want to. When I go into this type of thing, I want to read the old English, old Braille code. Or if I go into this app, maybe I'm going to be working a lot in Nemeth, or I want to, I'm going to be doing coding, so I want to work in computer Braille. So those are types of things you can Rose do. Rows 4 in to here. 16, automatic switching, apps, button, context, button, choose app so, for context, automatic switching, so heading, automatic apps, switching, button. you can say, when I go to a certain app or a certain context, so when something happens, go do this activity. Context, button. Choose apps or context within apps to automatically apply the settings from this act. Modifier keys. Default button. And then modifier keys. So, like I said, I'm not going to go into this specifically. Add activity all that, button. You know, deeply, but I want to show you that it exists. Activity one button. Delete. Yeah, I don't need that because I didn't. Programming button. So, right. So, they are, this one they already made. Or no, did I make this one? Uh, I don't remember if they made that one or if I was dinging around Muted. with it earlier. Unmuted. Um, and I made that programming one. I don't remember. But activity. So again, there's a lot of, again, customization. Voice over speech the items on the screen. Here. Audio. And button. iOS Command. 13. Button. Activities. Button. Rotor. Button. So we got your rotor stuff. Rotor actions. Button. Typing. Button. Typing. Always speak notifications. Off. Navigate images. Always. Large cursor. Off. Large Double cursor. Double tap to talk. Caption panel. Off. Double tap timeout. Point now, two five. Caption, caption panel. Caption panel off. is new to iOS 13. If you're familiar with the Mac... Remember, if you had voiceover on, um, some people might say, you know, like there would be this little rectangular window that would show you the visually, it would, it would basically type out what voiceover was saying. So like, let's say you had headphones on, but a sighted user was looking to what you were doing and it would, whatever voiceover was saying would be put in that panel. Well, now you have that in iOS as well. So I'm thinking, especially in like a school setting, teachers or educators are going to like that. So those are just accessibility some features help you customize voiceover. your iPhone for your individual need. Voiceover so on zoom, button. I zoom, don't think they've really button. done much there. Magnifier off. Magnifier button. seems about the same. Display and text size button. Um, motion button. Motion. Spoken content button. Audio descriptions off button. Physical and motor heading touch button. Face ID and attention button. Switch control off. Bu voice control off button. Voice control. Now I don't know if this is going to work over AirPlay, but we're going to turn it on and find out. Because this is another huge voice control feature off of iOS 13. double tap to toggle setting. Now, <clears throat> word of warning: I would definitely recommend you use headphones if you're using VoiceOver and you try to do this. Because if you don't, VoiceOver is going to go nuts and like it'll just voice control will just go completely crazy and start dictating and adding weird things and it kind of loops itself and you almost have to turn VoiceOver to make it off to make it stop. But I have headphones on, so I'm hoping it'll just recognize my microphone. So before I turn it on... Language, English, United States, customize commands, button. And again, you can add certain commands or customize commands. So if I go in here... Create new command, button. I can review what they are. So like, I and I did this because I was trying to figure out, like, how do I make voiceover? How do I do like a flick left or right gesture? So let's say I had a, mo a motor impairment in addition to being a voiceover user. Can I essentially do this? Can I flick left and right? Basic navigation. Change overlays, focus. Basic navigation. And button. I wasn't sure how to word it, but if you dig through these different categories of controls, yes, you can. And that's how you learn what to say. And one of the other things, so voice control, if you're using voiceover, if you're wanting to tap on something that's on the screen, basically what you do is you learn what voiceover says when that item is highlighted. And then if you say tap, 
that particular item, whatever voiceover calls it, that generally seems to work. Um, so I'll show you that momentarily. But like I said, if I go basic gestures, so if button. I go basic gestures, scroll down on button, scroll up on. So button. and I can turn these gestures on and off. So like let's say that I there's one maybe I keep Muted. maybe I keep triggering Unmuted. one that I don't mean to. I go in here and turn that one specifically off. Maybe you wanted to keep, you know, certain ones on and off um, just to make things easier for somebody. You could go in and really just customize which ones you want on and off. But like I said, these, you just say these things. Scroll to left edge, on, zoom in, on, button, zoom in less than, no, zoom out, zoom out, less than number greater, decrement less than item name greater than, so, by less than rows 50, double tap less than number greater than, And there on, are button. literally, again, there are dozens of these, so I can't go through these all. You're going to have to go through and look through these on your own. But they're nicely divided into basic categories. gestures, button, so overlays, back, button, basic navigation, basic button, navigation, basic navigation, create new command, and button. I can create a new command. I haven't even tried that yet, but um, overlays, button, basic gestures, but dictation, button, text navigation, text selection, button, text editing, button, text deletion, but device, button, accessibility. Button. So when I wanted to find out how to do some of these accessibility things, let's go in there really fast. Turn off voice control. On, so button. turn off switch control. Go on, rows here. 15 to th voiceover. Select next app. On button. So voiceover. Um, Voiceover select last item on button. Voiceover select first item. Voiceover select last than item name greater than. Voiceover read all on but voiceover select last than number greater than on. Vo 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 voiceover select next item on button. So voiceover select next item. That is essentially how you flick to the right. Um, and you can also say swipe left, swipe right. I always use flick because that's just the, the terminology that I've grown accustomed to using, but it's swipes. So instead of seeing that complex command there, I could say swipe left, swipe right. And when voiceover is on, it'll honor that too. So Accessibility button. I mean, <clears throat> okay, so let's go back. Voice control, voice control, off. On. All right, we're turned it on. Voice control, on, try, now, go back. I'm going to, we're going to try this here and see what happens. Wake up. Go home. Docs. Open Safari. Safari button. Possible text. AA. Format options. Button. Swipe right. Address. PCGamer.com. Right. Lock. Fill. Reload button. Swipe right. Skip to main content. In page link. Swipe up or down to select a custom action, then double tap to activate. Swipe right. New stream. Heading level 2. Link. Banner. Two landmark. Swipe right. Heading level two and banner. Go home. Blindness full. Open mail. Tap compose. Mail, mailboxes, back button. To text field is editing. To text field is editing. Character mode, insertion point at start. Tap message body. Message body, text field, is editing, sent from my iPhone, Hello, character comma. mode, insertion this point at end. This is just a demonstration of the new voice control feature in iOS 13, period. Hello, this is just a demonstration. New paragraph. As you can tell, comma, it's working pretty darn well, comma, even when As you can tell, it's working pretty darn well. Period. Even when mirroring to my computer. Go home. Line full. Tap settings. Settings. Heading. Go to sleep. There you go. I typed. I gave commands. You notice that I even did the two finger swipe left and right, that custom gesture that I added for headings. I just tried that for the first time now on a whim to see if it would work, and it did. So, like, it's actually pretty darn doable. You can use voice control with voiceover. Just remember to use headphones. There's going to be a few hiccups and problems here and there. And, you know, you're going to have to learn the syntax of your voice commands. But you can do it. And if you do something that's not quite right, a lot of times it will kind of pop up a, a hint and then voiceover reads it aloud. So if I were to say, like, voiceover or something, blah, blah, blah. And if it sort of knew what I was trying to do, but it didn't like it, it might give me, like maybe it recognized a keyword, but it was too wordy or not wordy enough. It would give me a hint. So, you know, 
they, there's probably a little bit more work that they need to do, in, you know, integrating voiceover and voice control together. But, <laughs> as you can see, it was pretty darn responsive. I've tried it on my iPad Pro, and I've tried it on my iPhone here, and it works. So, again, that's something that you can, you know, I mean, you had Siri before, you had the dictation thing, but literally now, like I said, if you have fine motor control, uh, in addition to being a voiceover user, or even if you aren't a voiceover user, um, you know, this is something that, you know, it's giving you, you know, you had switch control before, but again, everything you had to do sequentially, you would, you would just let it go sequentially. And then when you wanted, you would boom, hit your switch. But now if you have the capability to speak and it can understand you, <laughs> you can kind of zip through the operating system, zip through your device quite a bit quicker. So I wanted to hope, I'm glad that seemed to work even while mirroring. So let's go back. General I'm going to turn button. that off Controls for now. Display accessibility button. I'm going to go in Accessibility here. features help. Switch control off. Voice control on. Button. Turn that voice off control for now. on. Voice control on. Off. <clears throat> so that is voice control. That is accessibility features help. Switch control brand off. New feature voice control that's off. Side button. Pretty button. darn awesome. Apple TV remote button. Keyboards button. Um, keyboards. Hardware keyboards heading. Key repeat um, on button. Sticky keys off. Slow keys off button. Custom software keyboards. Show lowercase keys on. No. Double tap to top keyboards button. Um, Subtitles and captioning button. Audio slash visual. Hear it here keyboards button. Hearing heading. Hearing devices. RTT audio slash I don't subtitles know if general heading new. guided access off Siri button accessibility shortcut voiceover button right so the, all that is the same Wi-Fi I mean button. look at all the stuff just under accessibility that we went to I mean we had new voiceover things we had a whole bunch of commands and customization we have this new voice control thing we've got some new like keyboard stuff um so under accessibility there is a lot there alone to sync to you know sink your teeth into um you know there's like i said the dark mode is another really good thing uh let me go into general, general. i'm going to turn About off button. there's a hand off airdrop software update button airdrop hand off car play button iphone storage background app date and time keyboard but font keyboard, keyboard. button <clears throat> keyboards two um, button let me see text replacement keyboards two text replacement button one-handed keyboard off. All keyboards. Head. Auto capitalization. Off. Auto correction. Off. Enable caps lock. Where are on. You? Smart punctuation. Off. Character preview. Off. Period shortcut. On. Double tapping the spacebar. Dictation. Head. Enable dictation. Off. You can use dictation. About ask Siri. English. Head. Check spelling. On. Predictive. Off. Slide to type. Delete slide to type by word. Slide to type. On. No. Double off. Go away. Predictive. Off. So slide to type is kind of. It's sort of flick type esque, but I just I have not really gotten the hang of it. Um, basically. If you hold your finger on a key on your on your virtual keyboard, your on-screen keyboard, and then you just kind of slide, it'll kind of try to predict what word you're trying to type, and it'll kind of say the words as it thinks. It's like, oh, maybe you meant to type this, and then you add another letter, and then maybe you meant that. Um, I I may try to play with it a little bit more, but I found it more just distracting because I just use the regular uh, touch typing feature on the keyboard, and I find this particular thing rather distracting and I just hadn't turned it off yet so I wanted to show you where that feature was just go to general and keyboard and you can turn that off if you desire um, <clears throat> I still do use flick type just because I'm familiar with it I like how its iteration of the alternate keyboard works and for some tasks I really I really do find that keyboard helpful so you know, you can still use alternate keyboards, but then Apple has this, um, what do they call it again? Slide to type. Slide to off. type. Double tap to toggle um, setting. I turn that off. About. So, button. <clears throat> there is that, and you can also, there's a setting under voiceover settings. Like I said, it's, it's in two different spots. You have that, and then you have the voiceover setting where you can adjust the sensitivity of that. So, like, if you want that slide keyboard, but maybe you don't want the sensitivity as high, so you don't trigger it as easily. Uh, I believe that's under voiceover settings, and then you can change that. Um, so the other thing, one other thing that I want to show you regarding to iOS 13 
is in the app store. Navigation because home, page to app store. This threw me Double off. Double selected right away. tab one of one today. So Friday, September twenty seventh heading. Actions remember available. Across the bottom, you have selected today you tab today. one of five games, games tab two apps, apps tab three so of five. So good. Arcade tab oh, four of five. Arcade. So this is your Apple Arcade, your monthly subscription. It's like five bucks a month. I have not signed up for it yet because there's just nothing that I really want in there right now. But potentially, I could see this being kind of helpful um, because I, like, as I've talked about in many, many, many iOS videos and uh, that top story, this Mario Kart story right here. Game 101. I have a big problem with the mobile mobile gaming market that has infested its way into console and PC gaming as well. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. <sighs> Endless microtransactions paying for fake currencies, timers, all this other crap, all this other garbage, can't stand it. Um, these other games in this Apple Arcade are basically set to, you pay this fee, there are no ads, there are no timers, there are, you basically get to play the game. Who would have thought? God forbid. So you have to pay a premium subscription just to play a game in a traditional form. There's irony there somewhere there's some sadness there somewhere <laughs> but there you go so you have arcade on the bottom search and tab search five oh five so you're thinking well where the heck are my updates that is in the upper right hand corner now you have your my account my account button button in the upper Actions right available. hand corner if i double tap that you have account jesse anderson purchased button subscriptions purchase. purchased but subscriptions subscriptions button. those are nice and handy Redeem gift card or code. Send gift card by email. Add funds to Apple ID. So you have button. all those. Personalized recommendations. Button. The Life Simulator. Today. Updated recently. Heading. So I don't have any right now, but it says updated recently. If I if I had some, there would be <clears throat> um, an updates and then an update all and I could flick through and see. So instead you go to my account and then about halfway down the screen you're going to find your uh, app updates if you update them manually. So... That is where they are. They're not, there's no update tab on the bottom. Just go to your upper right. You got your My Account. There you go. There are your tabs. App Store. I do want to show you something in Doc, Safari, Safari that's pretty Double. cool. Safari. Now, I have not Format gotten to play with their download manager yet, but now you actually have, if you're on a website, and let's say that you want to download a file, maybe you get a zip file um, from, maybe you get a link to a zip file for one of your classes or something. Um... You could download that into files directly from Safari and then, boom, dump it out to Voice Dream Reader and you're good to go. Because you can read, you know, zip files of some things in, uh, in Voice Dream. But if I go in the upper left of Safari, format options, there's a format Show options format button. Option. And this is kind of nice 100 because now we have... Adjustable. Page scale, 100% yeah, adjustable. Page scale, so like your Swipe zoom. up or down with one finger. Show reader view, dimmed, button. Show reader view, if, a, if I had a page that supported it. Hide toolbar, button. Hide toolbar. Request desktop website, button. I can immediately request the desktop website. So maybe a lot of, sometimes your mobile sites, they don't have some of the information that some of their mobile sites are lacking in content. You can just immediately go to that upper left-hand corner and say, hey, give me the real deal. Turn off content blockers button. And I can do that if I want to. Website settings button. And website settings. Website settings button. So um, now you just have a lot more way. You don't have to go into Format settings options, and button. stuff as much as you did before. You know, you can just quickly go into um, your reader view like you could before, but then you have more uh, control over which, you know, mobile pages or um, desktop pages, those types of things. So... Those are a couple of, just a couple of nice things in Safari. Um, and like I said, you've got the, I'm just trying to think of any other really major, Doc, um, so. like major things that I noticed. Like I said, dark mode is key for low vision. Uh, I know people were, were reporting if you're using smart invert there was some weird glitchiness where depending on what you were looking at, it would try to auto adjust and then it would go back and forth between white and dark or light and dark mode. So, you know, your invert or not invert, whether it was smart or not, maybe not so much, but I found just sticking to dark mode, um, 
you can just do that. So settings. Show you where that is. Double settings. Fast. Jesse Anderson. Um, general. But general under. button. Control center. Display and accessibility. Display, display and brightness. I reckon, Appearance. I think. Heading. Yeah. Light button selected. Dark, dark button. Dark mode. There we go. Automatic off. No. Double I tap don't to toggle settings. So you can have it like automatic where and during the day it's light, during the dark it's or during the night it's dark. Nope. I want it all dark all the time. But that is where your dark mode is. So display and brightness button. I mean dark what I will settings. also say is the performance. Even I've seen it on some older devices. <clears throat> iOS thirteen is pretty darn fast. Um iOS in general is fast. Voiceover responsiveness is actually quite good. Uh, it feels really zippy again. Uh, there are some there are some bugs. Uh, they seem to have kind of fixed some of the focus issues. I still have seen a couple of them in mail, especially like when I go I mean a message and I delete it. Sometimes it doesn't read the subject of the next message, and sometimes I try to hit the delete button and then it kind of jumps back up and to somewhere else, so I have to hit re find the delete button at the bottom again. Um, so there's a few issues like that. Um, there were a few more fairly significant issues in iOS 13, but 13.1 cleared a lot of them up. So it is still not a bug free release, um, but like I said, even go into appleviz.com. They will have also some, a thread about new features, accessibility features and bugs introduced in iOS 13 and 13.1. So there are threads, there are podcasts, they'll go into a lot more detail than I will. Um, but I just want to give you my impressions. Like I said, overall, uh, you know, people are always paranoid. Well, there's this, there's a bug. And, you know, people just exaggerate things and kind of go, oh, my God, you know, it's the end of the world. There's a bug and Apple doesn't care about us. No, I think it's quite the opposite this time because, like I said, if you look at how many, just the customization of voiceover, like the commands, the activities, the voice control, the, I mean, there's just tons of stuff bringing accessibility up so people notice it more. Um just the accessibility stuff alone. No, I think they've actually done a pretty incredible job. Um, you know, are there bugs? Sure. But I mean, like I said, when you think about how much they're actually asking <laughs> this operating system on your little phone to do, <laughs> it's amazing. It works as well as it does. Um, but, um, like I said, I know there are a lot more features. Um, but th those are a few things that, I have played with that I've tried um, you know I think there's more Siri shortcut integration which I really really should try to play with more at some point I tried an iOS 12 but I just never really found the capability or I've never really found the functionality just to work the way I wanted it to so I never really got into Siri shortcuts much but um, <clears throat> you know there's a ton of stuff under accessibility alone You've got the file download, the file downloader in Safari now. You've got voice control. Um, you've got dark mode. Hooray, hooray! You've got the performance increases. Uh, you've got uh, you. I don't have the USB adapter or the lightning adapter. The what do they call like a camera kit? You can plug in thumb drives and hard drives and directly access them in the files app now. What I need to try is I wonder what happens if I plug a lightning cord into the phone and plug it into my computer. Ideally, you're so close, Apple. You're so damn close. What I really, really want from you, make it an iOS 13.2 update or whatever, or God forbid iOS 14, but you're so close. You're, su you're supporting thumb drives and hard drives for copying. Um, iTunes is finally, thankfully, slowing a dying a slow and painful death. Maybe not so much on Windows, but what I really, really want is I want to plug my phone into my computer, and then when I plug my phone in, I want it to see, basically, it'll show up as another drive, not the whole phone, but even if it would just show me 
the folder structure of where the files app is. So I can do whatever I want with my folder structure, nested folders, which you guess you can do. Um, but if you could do that in, you know, like I said, if I had access to the files app, wherever those directories are on my phone, if I could access those from my computer and then just copy stuff in Windows Explorer or File Explorer, boom, onto my phone, and they show up in the files app, and then when I go onto my phone, I can do whatever, or I can have other apps access them via the files app. Wonderful! That would be beautiful. That's what I want. Um, it's getting closer. I never ever thought it would happen, but like I said, I think they're finally starting to realize that, you know, people actually kind of want to do these things, and maybe they're maybe some people aren't quite as dumb as you think they are, or you, you got to give them more credit than you have. You know, people want to be able to do things that you're not, <clears throat> you know, you're not even giving the choice to say. Can I, can I do this? <clears throat> You're just saying, making the decision for us to say, no, you can't. So, <clears throat> that is, I know I'm going to forget something, and I'll remember after I'm done recording this video, but I really wanted to just give you my thoughts on iOS 13. Especially now that 13.1 is out, I would say, Yes, absolutely. I would recommend updating. If you have an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, unfortunately you will not be able to get the iOS 13 update. If you have a 6S or later, you can. And I want to say the i it's like the iPad Air 2 or newer, I believe. I don't I don't think the original Air will, but I think the Air 2 might still get iOS 13. But now that 13.1 is out, they've ironed out some of the really odd glitches of the Core 13 update. I would say go get it. Um, I think, yeah, you might find a few little hitches here and there, and it seems like they're already working on iOS 13.2 pushing that out here. I don't know when, but I would imagine not terribly far in the future. But I think personally that the the strengths and capabilities of it far outweigh the few problems I have. I mean, I've used this a lot. I've used Safari, I've used Mail, I've used tons of apps, you know, mainstream apps, accessible apps, blindness apps. I really haven't had a problem. Um, everything that I've wanted to do has worked just the same as it always has. And, you know, a few focus issues or a couple odd glitches here and there. I can't even think of them many that, uh, I can't even really think of that many that I've encountered. So, you know, like I said, review, you, you can review the Apple Viz and, and, uh, podcasts and, uh, forum posts and things like that. But again, like I said, I think some people may have, you know, maybe they are getting a little bit too paranoid about, oh my God, this is the end of the world. Um, you know, there are a few more issues if you are using a Braille display. To be fair, I haven't really used a Braille display with iOS 13 yet. I know a coworker of mine has, and he says it's actually not too bad. He is actually using it a fair bit the last few days. Um, so I've kind of taken it on his authority to say that, you know, of course, yeah, there's probably going to be a few bugs here and there, but largely he said it works pretty great. So, anyway, that is kind of a look at iOS 13, or 13.1 as it were already. But hope you guys found uh, this uh, impressions video helpful. Um, like I said, especially if you're looking at accessibility things, a lot to look into, a lot of things to try definitely recommend it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79 Mixer.com slash BGFH Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have already, thank you for the support. And again, I will talk to you in the next video. Later.